Exercise 9. In this exercise, we take a look at Creo's functionality when it comes to dealing with top-down assembly modeling. Now, top-down assembly modeling, that term is used across the board with all CAD systems pretty much. And what it means is that you're actually building the parts inside the assembly and then stealing information from one and copying over to the other. So if one updates, the next one updates by itself without you having to go in and open it and change each individual part. So it's a brilliant way to design and it's the most powerful functionality you'll probably find in CAD systems if they're able to do this. So we're going to begin by starting a new assembly and drawing out and creating this pencil sharpener that you see here. And so from here we're going to go ahead and draw this. The box is only a 2x2 two two square box. It's one inch thick. And so let's go ahead and build that out then. Begin with a new assembly and call it E9. Hit OK. Now go up to this button here and this is create. Click on create and it's going to allow us to create the component. This will be the we'll first create the E9 underscore front and it will be part solid. Hit OK. And then we can have it take from our uh, it inches parts solid template part. Okay. Otherwise, uh, at some of the school computers, sometimes you need to go with empty, which is just as fine. And but this is actually better. This actually brings in the planes for us. Whereas if you go with empty, it has no plane, but you can still use the planes from the assembly. Uh, it's just this might be a little bit more pleasant to work with. So go ahead and hit OK. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and for automatic, we're going to set it to default so that it locks the centers of our origin, our CSYS, the part in with the assembly. Okay. And hit the green check mark to apply. Now you'll see E9 assembly in the E9 front part. Right click on the E9 front part and find activate. Now we can select the front plane and start our sketch. We'll zoom up to it and actually we'll go to AB front and we'll draw the front of our sketch here. So go to rectangle and find center rectangle actually center rectangle. Click on the origin and drag out a, a rectangle and try and get it towards equal on both sides. So that means you'll get the uh, don't necessarily want the perpendicular. I'm not seeing I don't seem to be getting it, but that's okay. Just click it out as best as you can. If you get equal lengths, then you're in good shape. But this will work too. So we'll go 2 inches by 2 inches. Okay, we could hit OK. Go to Extrude. Rotate it a little bit to make sure you're going in the right direction. And this is going to be 1 inch thick. And hit Apply. Now you could go to sketch and select that front plane, or the fr not the front plane, but the actual front surface of the model, and then hit sketch over here on the right. Go to the circle tool, and at the center, draw out a circle. Now the dimension for that circle needs to be 1.25 for the diameter. So double click on that dimension, 1.25, and now you could extrude that. Hit OK, extrude boss, and the thickness of that is going to be a half inch. Okay, now we have to put a hole on that surface, so go to Sketch and select that front face. Hit sketch. And actually, I'm going to go to uh, Shading with Edges, just so you can see the edges a little bit. Okay, that was an update. But now we could go ahead and select the Circle tool, and on the center, drag out a circle. And that diameter for the hole needs to be a half inch. So 0.5. Go to OK, extrude, reverse it so it goes into the part. Make sure you select re Remove Material up here. And from this list here, select Through All, which is this one right here. Extends to intersect with all surfaces. Hit the green check. I'm going to turn off the planes temporarily, just so you can see this a little bit better. And now we're going to go and put the rounds on. So if we look at the page here, the rounds are going to be typically 0.125 and then except for this large one here is 0.25. So let's go to round 
and 0.25. We'll put the large one on first, select this edge, and hit the green check mark. Now go to rounds and 0.125 and select everything else. So select this edge here, this edge here. Select the four corners. Notice you can select through the part, it actually gets to the bottom edge, back edge, I should say. And then select these four front edges. Hit the green check mark to apply. Okay, we're going to go ahead and shell this out. So if you rotate around the back side, if you go and select shell, the typical wall thickness for this is going to be 0.1. So set this to point 0.1 and select this face right here and hit the green check mark to apply. Okay, the next thing we need to add is a little lip around this edge. So let's go ahead and find the sketch tool, select this face to start a sketch and hit the sketch button. Now we're going to grab the inside edge here and uh, we're going to project it. So click on project. Do a chain. You can select this edge here and then this little fillet. And then it's going to allow you to hit accept when you see the edges highlight. Unfortunately, the highlighted edges don't always work very well, but I'm going to hit next. And there we go. We could actually see it highlighted all the inner edges. It doesn't always work, but um, looks on this new version it seems to be working pretty well. Hit accept. And it'll tell you do you want to convert it to a loop? Just hit yes. Okay, at this point, we could hit OK, and we could go to Extrude. Now the thickness of this is going to be 0.25, or the height, I should say, and then the thickness is actually 0 0.05. So let's go ahead and change it to 0.25 for the height. And now let's take a look at a tool here, right here. It allows us to create a, a thin feature, so if we click on Thicken Sketch, we could put in a parameter, in this case 0.05. And we could hit the reverse button right here. Changes direction of the extrude. So 0.05, thicken sketch, change that direction. So it's should give you a preview. If it doesn't give you a preview, hit change direction. And hit the green check mark to apply. And there is the front part. Okay, we built that all inside the assembly. Now here what we can do, um, first of all, we could click on this and uh, go to Tree Filter. And if you want to see the features, go ahead and click on Features and hit OK. And so if you wanted to see what's inside the E9, you can see all the extrusions and such. Let's just bring that back up. And we can also see the planes too. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to get out of editing it. The way we know it's still in edit mode is that little ball. Actually, it's a little star, a green star. What you do to get out of editing a part, you right-click on the assembly at the top and activate that. It takes away the little ball then. But if you ever need to go back and edit that, you right-click and activate it. It brings it back. Right-click up here, activate the assembly to deactivate the part. We're going to go ahead and put in our part in the rear now. So, for that, let's go to Create again. And we'll call this E9 Rear. Uh, uh, Proe typically doesn't like gaps. I haven't tested on this latest version, but I, I don't want to test it right now. Okay, again, you could copy from existing, or you could use empty. I'm going to copy from existing. Hit OK. And again, go with default. And that should relocate that to the center there. And hit the green check mark. Now we need to activate the E9 rear by right clicking and activating it so we get the little ball. And probably throws us into this like a transparent view, which is fine. We're going to click on sketch. And we're actually going to sketch on the surface of this model right here. So click on this little ledge. It's the secondary ledge right there. Click on that. Start a sketch. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use and steal that those edges for our next model. So we go to Project, select Chain, and select two of those edges on the outer side there. 
And again, you can hit Next until you see the preview highlight everything on the outside. Hit Accept. And again, just hit Yes to this to convert to a loop. Hit Close. And now we could extrude that. Hit OK. Now let's go hit this little um, Fit. Refill. Go to Extrude. And now for the second part, it's going to be one inch thick and it's going to have a, a actually one and a half inches thick and it's going to have a dome radius on the back. So let's go with uh, 1.5. And this is the reservoir basically with all the pencil shaping, shavings will fit in. We need to have it be able to come apart, but it will be big enough and easy enough to hold in the hand. So go ahead and hit accept. Then go to the rounds tool, click on this edge here, and drag this down. Actually, we just want it to be 0.5. We could type it in as well. It might be easier. And hit the green check mark to apply. Okay, let's shell that out. Go to the shell command, and the shell is only going to be 0.05. Thick. And select this face in the front. You should get a clear preview. Hit the green check mark. Apply. Now there's a little detail of these clip mechanisms that need to be put in here. So let's go ahead and put one of those in. They have to be on both sides. They're symmetric. They're centered. Uh, actually, uh, I should say it's 0.125 off the front edge. So what we can do for that is hit the little arrow to the right of E9 rear and select the right plane and start a sketch on it. And that's right in the center as you can see here. Now we could actually go here to right and then also change it to wireframe and zoom up. Now we're going to draw our first circle right on this edge here but you notice that the edge doesn't come up. So instead of going with the circle let's go to the references button and select that edge right there transform it for references. We do the same over here as well. Then hit close. And now we should be able to draw a circle on that edge. So right there, click and drag out a circle. And this dimension is going to be 0.125. And if we look at the print, this is a radius of 0.025. So it'll be 0.05 for the diameter. Now we could mirror that across right now. Why don't we try that? Let's go with the uh, centerline tool here. And right in the middle, click and drag out a horizontal centerline. Now we could go to um, could go to the mirror tool and select the center line or the, the circle here. Actually, let me middle click here. Let's select that circle again. Just want to make sure I didn't have it pre-selected there. So select the circle, go to mirror, and then select the center line that we want to mirror across. And it should appear at the bottom. Okay, at this point, we can now extrude this 0.25 thick from the mid plane. So we go OK, go to extrude, select mid plane, which is right here. Extrudes on both sides. And it's going to be 0.25 wide. Hit the green check mark to apply. And now if we shade that, we should be able to see the little features on both top and bottom side. Okay, and we're done with the rear. So let's get out of editing the rear part. Just right click and uh, I should right click on E9 assembly actually and activate that. Now we're going to click on this the E9 rear, uh, I'm sorry, E9 front, and activate the E9 front because we need to put those same little pockets or female side of the, this area. So we could do the same thing. So from the E9 front, hit the little arrow and select the right plane, start a sketch, and let's go normal too. So we'll go to the right the orientation. We could go to wireframe. And we could see those little notches there. So for this, we could actually uh, go to the circle tool or offset even. Go to concentric 
select that edge and drag out a little circle, a little bit bigger than the last one. And we want a little bit of clearance, so it was 0.5 originally, so why don't we do 0 0.055. This is a little bit larger. And we could just go down here do the same thing. Make sure concentric circles selected, select that edge. And we should be able to find R, which is the equal to that other end. And then middle click a couple times. At this point, we hit OK. We could shade it. Might make it a little easier to see. And now we could extrude those. Now again, we're going to extrude those um, mid-plane. And instead of 0.25, again, we'll add a little clearance, so we'll make it 0.26. And then remove the material. You can see the preview here, the removal. And we'll have the nice offset from around there so it can cl clip in easily. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. And there it is. Check on both sides. All right, at this point, we could turn off editing the part because we're done. Activate this front. If we want to change the appearance, we could just go over here to the Appearance Gallery, select Glass, and under, instead of All, change it to, you can't see this unfortunately on the print, but change it to Component, and then just click this back component. Say so we want to make that transparent. And then up here, you can just hit OK. Now you could actually see it like it would be, how it would be made. If you want to change the front color, you can go to Appearance Gallery. I'll change the front to green or red. And again, Component, select the front. And then over here, just hit OK. <coughs> now, the moment of truth is when we can actually go in here and edit this feature, the ex uh, original extrusion. And so if we edit that we should get the dimensions that appear. We didn't have to edit definition, we just went to edit. And let's say we wanted to widen this. Double click on this two, we'll make it three. Okay. Now we're gonna have to regenerate. And they both should update just like that. If not, hit regenerate a second time. And that is the power of top-down assembly modeling. You change one part, they both update. And yet they're both separate parts, E9 and the front rear. Just remember, if you save this off, you want to save them together. So let's say we go to File and do a Save. Um, you could save them all in the same place. Or you could package them if you go to File and Save As and Save a Backup. So we'll be able to go save a backup and we can package them somewhere. So in this case, let's say I want to go to the desktop. And I'm going to right-click and create a new folder. I'm going to call it E9, OK, and then just hit OK down here. And now on my desktop, I have this folder. Let me minimize this. There's the E9 folder. I just double click, and I got E9 assembly, the front and the rear part. This is what you would, if you had to send this off to a customer, you got to send everything or else they can't open the assembly. They need all three parts or all the parts that go along with it. So that completes this exercise.